Hey there, welcome back. So we have these June bugs and they're nicely hydrated. I'm just going to check how mobile their limbs are. They look pretty good and oh, <laughs> the little claws you can see on the end of their limbs always get stuck to my fingers. I'm going to start by placing pins on either side of each limb so the beetle doesn't move while I adjust everything else. You can actually put a pin straight through the right wing, um, which isn't usually too obtrusive in the final product, but I still prefer to stabilize the specimen with pins around the legs. I've decided to pose this guy with the wings extended, so I am just going to pop the Electra, which is um, the hard shell covering over the wings. It can be kind of scary to do this for the first time because you don't want to break anything, but once you've done it a couple times, you can really sense how much force the insect can take. And as I'm doing this now, I'm realizing that this would have been easier to do before I pinched the insect down, but you know, you live and you learn. I'll do that next time. And you can see here that I am pulling lightly on the wing. The very distal portion of the wing actually folds out from underneath itself. Um, and I've got this thinner bit of foam placed underneath the wing so it can rest higher than the legs. Now that I've got the wings fully extended, I'm going to take this small scrap paper and lay it flat on top and pin all around the wing. This cheap moth is nice and hydrated and ready to go. I'm going to place the moth's abdomen into this groove here and um, we want the wings to lay above the rest of the body. So with the same paper that I've used for the beetle wings, I will use for the moths and butterflies. I'm sliding the paper between the two sets of wings and trying to lay them down as gently as I can. I'm pinning this paper down around the wing so that it stays in place while I work on the other set. I've got these nice tweezers that I'm gonna use to gently pull the forewing up. And once I've got it in a position that I like, I will pin the paper all around the wings. All this time, I'm using reference images from the internet just to see what is the most lifelike position for this moth to be in. Now I've got this um, lovely twin-eyed sphinx moth and um, I'm gonna follow pretty much the same procedure with the last guy. A lot of the time I get too impatient and take moths and butterflies out of their hydration chamber too early, which leads to a whole bunch of problems later on. I was extra patient with these, so nothing should snap off that can't be repaired. I'm trying to pull the forewing up, but I'm having a little bit of trouble. I'm going to go for the hind wing to see if I can actually pull that down instead. Oh, no. it looks like it's working. Good. Oh, and I, I tore a little bit of the wing, but that's okay. I can totally fix that. I'm just gonna try to uncrease this hind wing. And the other side definitely went a lot easier. <laughs> now for the swallowtail butterfly, again, pretty similar process. Here's the abdomen that I broke off that I will glue on later. I've never really handled or pinned bees before, so I'll be doing a little bit of playing around just to see what works. I wanted to pin these on a curved surface, so I found some pipettes in our back room, and here we go. 
I'm just going to see what positions look most natural for these bees and hopefully I can pin them in a way that they can stay there. I'm going to pin this last one on a flat surface just to see. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I will plan the museum display and mount the insects.